The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. I just want to say welcome to Blank Slate Ministries. If you are joining us for the very first time, I'm so excited to have you with us today. It's an honor to be with you. My name is Pastor Cody, and this is Blank Slate Ministries. I just want to say a couple of things before we get started. We are currently running the ministry online. You know, we do all of our sermons online because I am currently in Ananidewa, Brazil. We're in we're right outside of Belém, the capital of the state of Para, here in Brazil, or Para. And we are doing missions. We've been on mission with God for almost 10 months now here in Brazil. And we are preaching all over Brazil and we are seeing God do great miracles. It's been such a blessing and such an honor to be here doing the will of God. And so I just want to encourage you that we do have all of our sermons archived on our website and on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch all of the amazing things that God has been doing. And it's just such a blessing. I wanted to continue uh, pastoring and leading this church even when we went to Brazil and the Lord said just run the ministry online so just because we do all of our teaching online we still have curriculums that you can be a part of we can still take prayer requests you can send those online we still do counseling we still do all of the normal functions of our church and we do most of it virtually but we do have elders in America and we are partnered with many other churches in America. So if there is something that you need, please feel free to reach out and contact us. You can use the contact form on our website and we always respond to that. So I just encourage you to continue to follow along with us. We're gonna go over a couple of quick announcements before we receive the offering. And we're gonna jump right into the lesson today. I'm gonna preach on something I've shared before, but I just preached on it here at a church here in Brazil and it's stirred up inside of me. I want to talk about it again. It's so amazing and it's very powerful. The first announcement is follow our daily teachings Monday through Saturday at 9 a.m. on our YouTube channel. It is a very powerful thing to get that daily bread of the word of God. They're anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes depending on the day. And we are in a series on end time prophecy. We're studying every chapter in the Bible that is eschatological, that deals with the generation in which the Lord returns. We're currently in the book of Isaiah. Um, we do take breaks. You know, we'll we'll talk about other things like the past two days. Uh, we had a, a couple other lessons. But in general, we are in this series, End Time Prophecy. We've been doing it for almost a year now, and we are going to continue that until we finish all of those chapters. And then we'll go into a new series. But I just want to encourage you to follow those daily teachings. I have known many people for many years, 
And I have known a lot of people since the beginning of our daily teachings when I very first started them. And they are currently still in the same problems, same situations. They haven't seen the breakthrough or the miracle that they've been praying about for two years. And one of the things that we know is that they're not in the word of God. Their lives aren't being transformed because they're still dealing with the same things and they're not allowing God to transform their life because they're not letting the word of God transform them. See, you are transformed when you renew your mind by the word of God. And that's one of these amazing parts to our daily teachings is that every day the word of God can penetrate and divide your spirit and your soul, give you revelation, transform you understanding how to live for God. Do you need to follow those daily teachings? It will transform your life. And if you say, hey, I, I don't really want to study those end time stuff, um, I would encourage you to go back to the beginning of the series where we will actually tell you why it is so important. But we do have over 600 daily teachings. So you could start in the beginning and you could listen for a very long time. And I just encourage you to do that. We have over 1,100 sermons on our YouTube channel. There is more than enough information on our website right now to really transform you completely to receiving the fullness of God. I do want to encourage you in saying that to take our discipleship curriculums. We have six curriculums currently available on our website. We have one ebook, and we are going to be publishing one more book this year. Uh, we're only going to do one this year because we're going to release a full textbook on the book of the Revelation. It's going to be a very extensive and detailed book. I've been working on it here in Brazil for almost a year now. We've been compiling all of the notes, all of the information, and I'm going through revisions on that right now. We're going to release it sometime this year, so be on the lookout for that. It will be the most extensive, comprehensive uh, piece of material and piece of literature that we have produced. And it will be the most detailed teaching on the book of the Revelation that I have ever done. And I encourage you to get that when we release that sometime this year. So just be on the lookout for that also. But the last thing I want to say is partner with us. BlankSlateMinistries.org slash partnership. Yesterday in a daily teaching, we talked about giving. And I'm going to go over that again in just a moment. But you have to give to be able to receive. And I encourage you to partner with us. We are advancing the gospel throughout Brazil, literally to the nations because we are from America. But your partnership is a way for you to partner in what we are doing. Not everybody is called to be a missionary. Not everybody is called to full-time ministry. But through your giving, you can participate in the blessings that are on our lives for what we do in the mission field. It's not just the missionary that is blessed when they go. It's the people that support the missionary that are blessed because they are helping advance what God is doing to the nations. So I encourage you to partner with us. And I want to say thank you. We have a lot of very faithful partners. We do receive offerings here in Brazil when I preach and we do, we do have giving that happens here in Brazil. But I want to say a very big thank you because... We have a big amount of support that comes from the United States and from America, and it is such an honor to be able to receive, and I want to thank you for your giving. It is helping us do great things, and I am going to take the money and give it away and use it to bring people into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's go ahead and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm just going to read one verse and then we are going to receive the offering but this i say he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully now i don't have time to go through this all today like i said i did a, a daily teaching on this yesterday where we went through it for a minute and we've preached on giving we have many sermons on giving so i'm not going to talk about it a lot today but i do believe that when it comes to receiving the offering I should give you a word out of the word of God. We should, you should have a word when you give to move in faith according to the word of God. That's why we do this. You know, there's certain times people just receive the offering, but they don't share anything. 
And uh, I believe you should always give a word when you receive the offering to stir up faith because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so the Bible says that the proportion that you reap in your receiving is directly in proportion to the giving. Now in the natural, that's very easy. However many seeds you plant in the ground, that's the proportion in how many trees you will get from the seeds. But if you don't plant seeds, you don't reap trees. You know, if you don't plant apple seeds, you don't get apple trees. But the way in which you receive is directly in proportion to the amount of seed that you put in the ground. You know, if you only put one seed, the option is one tree. Now you might have a bunch of apples, but it's still just one tree. But if you put a hundred seeds in the ground, you'll get a hundred trees, you get thousands of apples at that point. You know, so your receiving is directly in proportion to the amount that you give. And this is not an, uh, an option in the kingdom of God. It is the law of sowing and reaping. And God is not a man in that he will lie. God will not change ever. Once God has spoken it, that's what he will do. And God spoke the law of seed time harvest, of sowing and reaping into the earth. And he said, church, hear me now. This is the way that you operate. This is how you do it. The same way when you buy a new car or you buy a new appliance, you read through the owner's manual to see how something works. Well, your Bible is your owner's manual. And God says, for you to receive financially, you must give finances. You have to give money to receive money. It's the only way the kingdom of God operates when it comes to finances. So if you want to receive, or if you're seeing a lack in your finances, or you want to be prosperous and you want these things, then the only way to receive it is to give. Now, I just, I'm going to say this very bluntly. I'm just going to just say it so we can receive the offering, make it as straightforward as possible. If you want to be broke and you want to be poor and you never want to see an increase in your finances, then don't give. That's the simplest way to stay broke in your life is just not to give. But if you don't give, do not expect to see the blessing when it comes to your finances because it will not happen. And I need to be very clear about that because there is a misconception in the church that I don't have to give, but I will still receive financial blessing. That's not true. The only way you can receive financial blessing is by giving financially. That's why we give you the opportunity to give every Sunday when we take the offering. Listen, I am a blessed person because I give. I give bountifully, I reap bountifully in my personal life. This church gives bountifully, we reap bountifully. We do that because of our giving. It's not your giving that affects my harvest. My harvest is in relationship to my sowing. The same thing in your life. You can only receive if you give, and the amount that you receive depends on the amount that you give so we need to cooperate with the laws of god and we need to come in agreement with what god's word says that if we want to receive we must give so i'm going to give you an opportunity to give today we're going to receive the offering information is going to come up on your screen in just a moment you can give online you can give by pics if you are here in brazil and you can also mail we do have a p.o box in chicago so I'm going to pray and then the information is going to come on your screen and we will have one minute to give your offering and then we'll jump right into the lesson today. So Father, I thank you for everybody that is giving today. Let them receive good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, men giving into their bosom. God, let them receive a hundredfold increase in Jesus' name as they sow bountifully, let them reap bountifully. What they sow, they will reap in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You have one minute to give, and when we come back, we'll jump right into the lesson.
and we're back. And I want to say thank you to everybody that is giving today, that is becoming partners with us today, that is joining with us as we do the will of God and see the kingdom of God increase all across the world. I'm thankful for the fact that we have a church in America that is faithful, and I'm thankful that it is helping bring the gospel to the nations. I was in a church recently. I believe it was about a week ago I was in this church and I was preaching and they said it was an American that brought the gospel to Brazil you know, I mean, he was referring to the two brothers that started the Assemblies of God Church here in Brazil. The, the two Swedish men that started the Assemblies of God here in Brazil that came from America actually came from South Bend, Indiana. And he said, it's American again that's bringing the power yet a second time to us. And I was just, I was blessed to hear him say something like that. And I'm not saying this for any other reason than what you are doing and your giving and your support is allowing us to do these great things to touch so many other people. And uh, I just want to give you some of those things. God is doing some amazing things here, and it's a blessing, and it's touching many, many people, and we thank God for that. All right, we're going to jump right into the lesson today. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to talk about obedience. So, Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, go with me to Hebrews chapter 5. Let's go ahead and just read through two verses, 8 and 9. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, I did daily teachings on this uh, maybe four or five weeks ago. I did some daily teachings because I was at a church here in Brazil in a city called Bengui. And I preached a three-day conference, and the conference was based on obedience. And the pastor asked me to come in and talk about obedience and uh, I'm going to, and it was amazing. And last night I was invited to another church and we were uh, doing these seven pillars that help establish the believer. And uh, they asked me to pick a topic. I could either choose fear or I could choose obedience and just pick one of the two to preach on. And I told my translator, you already know what I want. I'm going to preach on obedience. Um, Obeying the Lord is one of the foundational principles of this ministry in this church, and we teach on it many times. We talk about it all the time. It's it's important. It's one of my favorite things because our father Abraham, the father of faith, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says he obeyed God when God spoke to him. I mean, that's it's very clear. To walk in the footsteps of Abraham is to obey God. And not only that, but in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9, what we just read, it says that Jesus is the author of our eternal salvation unto all of them, ready, that obey him. He is not the author of eternal salvation unto all them that disobey him. It's to them that obey him. See, obedience is a demand of God. If you are a child of God, if you are born again, there is a demand on your life to be obedient to God. It's not an option. It is a demand of God. You must be obedient if you are going to inherit eternal salvation. That's a very important thing. And and I, and it's it's one of those things I say very bluntly because the word of God makes this very clear. There are people in the church, "Oh, I'm going to have my salvation, but I'm not going to obey God." No. Jesus is salvation to them that obey him. Obedience is not an option. It is a demand of God. And for you to be a child of God, you must obey the Lord. So in saying that, I'm going to talk about only two things today. We could talk about this for a very long time. I preached a conference on this. I took over three hours on this. Last night, I spent over an hour teaching on this. 
Uh, you know, we have many daily teachings on this. We have so much information. So I'm going to summarize this very quickly. It's going to be a very short lesson, but I'm going to try to get as much of this out as possible today, because like I said, we've already done five days of daily teachings on this. So it's just a, a quick little summary because I wanted to talk about it again. The first thing is Jesus is a son and that's a capital S son. He is the son of God. He is God himself incarnated in a man. He is God, fully God and fully man, but he is God. He is the son of God. We're talking about Jesus here. This is very important. It says that Jesus learned. Man, that right there, you could preach an entire message on the fact that Jesus learned. Like that's so important. You know, in Luke 2.52, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. You know, Jesus was born of a virgin, of Mary, Virgin Mary. Jesus was born as a child and he had to grow. You know, it said that he was in the temple, you know, at 13 years old, you know, debating the scriptures, you know, and he had to grow and he had to learn, you know, that's, it's so important. He had to learn things as he grew. But Jesus learned, it said he learned he obedience. So what one of the things that he learned was obedience. He had to learn it. Now, if you have to learn something, that means that it does not come automatically. It's not automatic and it's not natural. It's not something that happens by nature to learn something means that there is effort and there is intentionality it's not automatic see as even as a born again believer man this is so important let me make this statement as a born again believer it's not automatic that you obey god you say well i i am i'm i'm saved i i'm gonna obey god jesus didn't have to be saved because he never had any sin. Jesus had no sin, yet he still had to learn obedience. You who had sin, who got redeemed by the blood of Jesus and got born again, you, how much more do you have to learn obedience if Jesus had to learn it also? That's important. Just, you know, believer, non-believer alike obedience is not automatic in anybody's life obedience has to be learned if jesus had to learn it we definitely have to learn it obedience is something that you learn it's a very important point you have to learn how to be obedient you have to learn obedience that way you may become obedient you don't become something meaning by nature who you are until you first learn it it must be learned to become who you are. It's a very important point. Now, if you must learn this thing called obedience so that you may become obedient, who you are, you have to learn it. How do you learn it? And this is what's so important. It's only one way. He learned it by the things which he suffered. See, obedience is learned one way. Obedience is learned in the sacrifice. Obedience is only learned in the sacrifice through the things which he suffered. Now, let me just say a couple things. It's not obedience unless it's a sacrifice. That's an important point. See, I, I, I'm going to give you the same example I give everybody. If I said, open your hand, I'm going to give you a million dollars. Will you open your hand? Yes. Everybody opens their hand. It's a blessing. Does that require obedience? No. Do you learn obedience? No. Everybody opens their hand. But if I say, come with me, we're going to go to the jungle to preach the gospel and they're going to kill us there that's a sacrifice and in that moment you learn am i really obedient or not so you don't learn 
if you really are obedient to God until the right amount of pressure is applied and you're faced with the circumstance and the choice when it is a sacrifice and when you suffer. When it costs you something is when you learn, am I really obedient? Obedience is not learned in the blessing. Obedience is not learned in the in the in the in the prosperity and the miracles and the promise. You don't learn obedience in the promises. You learn obedience in the sacrifice through the things which you suffer. Which is why even Jesus had to learn obedience. Because he was faced with the choices in which he would suffer, in which it would be a sacrifice, and he had to make a choice. Now, it's a very important point. Let's say one more thing, and then we'll summarize this. Obedience requires three things. And if it does not have all three, then it is not obedience. Obedience requires three parts. And if it does not have all three, then it is not obedience. Number one, you have to hear from God. Now you can read the word of God. You can hear, you can see a dream or a vision. You can hear the audible voice of God. You can receive it prophetically. But the first thing you must do is hear from God. You have to know what God says. That's number one. Number two, you have to submit your will. You have to make a choice. See, the choice is part of the process. You have to make a choice. You have to submit your will. And a submitting of will is a choice that God's will comes first. And you ready? I'm thankful in the process. You know, in 2 Corinthians 9, the passage we read about giving, if you read later on, it says, not grudgingly or of necessity when it talks about giving. See, you must give, but the heart response in giving is most important. See, God's not just wanting servants that try to do things but have the wrong heart. God wants you to have the right heart in it that I take my will and I submit it. I take all of, like, I have a choice and I'm choosing to put God first, what God says first, before me. And I'm thankful in it. God doesn't want just, you know, uh, discontent, you know, grudging servants. That's that's not it. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Step one is to hear. Step two is to submit your will. Step three is to act it out. It's actually to do it. It's to put action with it. Now, let me just say something. Faith without works is dead. When you submit your will and you say, I believe that God has said this and I'm going to do it. If you don't do it, then you really don't believe it. If you say, I will, and then you don't do it, the Bible says you're a liar. See, faith is justified by works. See, let's just say this. You must hear from God. And if you hear from God... And you say, I will do it. I will submit to this. I will go there. But then if you don't go, which means you're missing one of the three steps, then it's not obedience. You didn't do it. It's not true obedience. Let's say it better. If you make a choice, I'm going to do this and you do it, but you had not heard from God, which means God didn't tell you that. You just did something. You made a choice and you did it, but you didn't hear from God. It's not obedience. See, Paul went to the Gentiles. Peter went to the Jews. They made a decision. God is telling you to do that, and God is telling me to do this. So you do what God told you, and I'm going to do what God tells me. You have to hear from God. You can't just choose and do. You have to hear. So if you have not heard, you ready? It's not obedience. Let's say you hear from God, but you don't submit your will. You just do it, 
but you're grudging the entire time and you're not doing it out of a cheerful heart, then that service, it's not obedience. It's not the same. See, there are many people that will do things because God said it, but their heart is not in it because they hadn't submitted their will. The truth is eventually you will quit. See, that's a very important thing to understand is that for it to be true obedience, it requires all three. And if it doesn't have all three, then it's not obedience. You have to hear from God. What does God say? And you can read it out of your Bible. That's You just have to know what does God say. Number two, you have to surrender your will. Just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, not my will, but your will. You have to submit to the will of God. And then three, you have to go all the way. You have to do it. See, Jesus said, I can call a legion of angels and be delivered right now. But it's the will of God, because God said it, that I will do it. And I surrendered my will to him. I'm going to go all the way. See, Jesus did not have to die on that cross. Yeah, he wasn't guilty. He could have called a legion of angels and been delivered. He went as the innocent man for those that are guilty. He went and paid the price for us. He did not have to do that. He did that by choice. He acted out the obedience that he declared in the Garden of Gethsemane when he died on that cross. Because he heard from the Father that said, you're going to go to that cross and die. And the thing that's so important, it's a sacrifice. Because it's in the moment of sacrifice that you learn, am I really am I really going to surrender my will and do this? Because God said it. Am I really going to do that or not? Or am I going to quit in the process? You know, Paul said in the book of Acts that John Mark, I think, I think it was John Mark. I had to go back and look. But Paul said in the book of Acts, he said, he left me. It got really hard, and that man walked away. You started the journey, but when things got hard and you were put under the pressure, when it became a sacrifice, will you still obey God? And Paul said, he left. He chose not to. And for so many people, they say, well, I, I'm obedient. But the truth is, the right amount of pressure has not been applied. You have not actually been put in the circumstance when it is a sacrifice to make the choice, when it costs you everything. See, I am an obedient person to God, but it's because I've been put in that position by God and I've made the choice many times. But even now, there are still times when God speaks and I am faced with the choice Will I surrender to it and will I still do it? And it's going to be a sacrifice every time. Am I obedient? I learn this every day of my life when God speaks to me and tells me to do something. Now, let me say uh, just two more things. God wants obedient people. It's a demand of your life. If you're going to inherit salvation, you are going to be obedient to God. That's not an option. It is a demand of God. So if God demands something of your life, that you be obedient, and God says the only way to learn this is in the sacrifice, through the things that you suffer, what do you think God is going to say? He's going to tell you things that make you sacrifice. He's going to bring you into a position where you have to choose, will I sacrifice everything for God? When it costs me everything, will I still do it? Because then do you learn, am I really obedient or not? Am I obedient or not? Let me say just one last thing. There's a lot of people that believe what I'm doing right now, as you're listening to the sermon, is I'm teaching you obedience. But the truth is, I'm not teaching you obedience. I'm not even teaching, I'm not teaching you how to be obedient right now. That, and that may sound confusing, but you need to listen. This is very important. I'm not teaching you obedience. 
Because the only way you can learn obedience is in the sacrifice. You cannot actually learn obedience sitting in church listening to me preach. I am not teaching you obedience. I am teaching you how to learn obedience. You are learning today, how do I learn to be obedient? That's what you're learning. What I'm teaching you is what is going to happen. That you are going to be put in a position where God is going to speak and the word of God is going to tell you things and it is going to demand sacrifice in your life even your whole life. And when it demands that sacrifice, you are going to have to make a choice. Do you submit or not? And after you submit, then you still have to walk it out, even if it costs your whole life, even if you have to die for it. And that's where you learn if you are really obedient. See, the power in the message that I'm giving today is not that you learn obedience. You're not actually learning obedience today. You're hearing a message, but what you're learning is how God is going to teach you it. God's going to teach you obedience. You're going to learn it. You're going to learn whether you are obedient or not. And the way you're going to learn it is by the sacrifice that you're willing to make. How far are you willing to go with God? And then when God puts you in that position, and you're forced to make the choice, will you actually do it? Would you give your life for God? Would you sacrifice everything? I know a lot of people, you got a thousand dollars in your pocket. God's not said anything yet. It's, it's not a sacrifice yet. But when God says, give the thousand dollars away, now it's a sacrifice. Now you're in the position you have to choose. Will I give everything I have? Will I actually do it? And then when it comes time to do it, will you do it? I've heard God speak to people before. They, God spoke to them and they said out of their mouth, I'm going to give you a thousand dollars. Amazing. Like, I don't care if you give or not. It doesn't affect me either way. But if God tells you to do it and you say, I'm going to do it. Okay. And then the next day, when it came time to actually give the money, they gave $100. Well, you know, I thought about it. You're not obedient. If you, you say that God said it, and you say out of your mouth, I'm going to do it, and then you don't do it, you're not obedient. And I can tell you the reason why. The reason why people don't do it it's because it's a sacrifice. It's going to cost them something. And that's the position that most people don't understand. God has great promises, great blessings, great miracles. We see all of them. But before you see blessings and miracles and promises, you're going to be faced with choices of sacrifice. Will you do it when God says it? You're learning today that you're going to learn you are going to learn if you are obedient or not. And the way God is going to teach you is by putting you in the position to make a decision. Will you sacrifice everything for God or not? Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment, and we will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. Lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't faced by the fire. So why should I be? Because you take good care of me. The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should
should I be? Cause you take good 